Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the May edition of the TED and EUD Communication and Media Seminar. Here we are, May already. And this evening, we have a guest, a friend, a friend, William Co Williams Costa, who is the Communication Director for the General Conference of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. We know Williams. Does he need an introduction? But all I know about Williams, he's enthusiastic about Jesus. He's enthusiastic about sharing Jesus. He's enthusiastic about sharing Jesus through digital communication. But tonight, for something completely different. How do we share Jesus through music? How, how is there something special about when vocabulary touches the heart and mm. is connected to the mind through music? Williams, need I say more? <laughs> I just welcome you and we're gathered here because we know we are going to be inspired and thank you for your presence this evening. Paolo, lead us in prayer as we open this 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 inspiring conversation together. Thank you, David. Let's pray together. Thank you, dear Lord, because you brought us together this evening uh, through this uh, digital means, but also through your spirit to hear and to reflect about the role of music in advancing, advancing mission. We would like to thank you for William's presence and for his ministry and also his passion um, in sharing the gospel, in sharing music, in sharing your love with people. Thank you and please be with us this evening. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Uh, I'd like, okay, I would like to start this conversation. It's not gonna be a presentation, but more like a conversation asking you the following question. Does it make sense that people in communication to deal with music do use music? Why do you think it would be something to be used by, uh, to, to, to use music? Because we know that we need to deal with news, with photography, with design, and the logo of the church, and public relations. We know everything that we need to to confirm your speaking language. No, not Italian, it's English. Let me put here, quickly here, English. All right. So uh, please try to answer me if it makes sense that music is something connected to communication. I know that starting something like this is kind of, hmm, okay, let me wait to hear who who going to say. And... But give me your thoughts, your ideas on that. Yeah, um, this is Peggy. So music is, I think you call it a universal language. Mm -hmm. You can start singing. And it makes sense to somebody who doesn't speak your language and they can follow that. So yeah. it, it, I don't know, you connect at a different level <laughs> and it makes sense where language can be sort of a, there's a barrier, but music seems to transcend the yeah. language. Levels. Yeah, very good. Yeah. Music is a special, it's a fantastic way to communication, to communicate. But if it is such a fantastic way to communicate, why we don't use it? <laughs> That's my question. Uh, can someone give a little bit more feedback on that or some observation? So Go ahead. Uh, I think that uh, we are not only rational beings, but also emotional beings. Mm -hmm. And so if we only communicate rationally with words and logic and everything, we miss a certain target audience and by communicating using music we can communicate emotions mm -hmm. and that can touch people's hearts and i think that's why music is very important in uh, communication yeah or yeah i think nobody and nobody would uh, ever try to put out a, a evening movie without a musical score to <laughs> underline all of that you know 
So uh, obviously, William's uh, music has an enormous impact. And just as the previous speaker said, you know, it touches the emotions. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Anything more? Anyone wants to make a commentary in regards of how, how why we should connect music with communication? I was just going to add to what the previous speakers have said. I don't know if it answers the question, but um, like you said, the movies, they start with music. When you go to the shop, in the shopping mall, they play music to get you to buy things. <laughs> <laughs> it gets you into that mood where you, uh, you start to, oh yeah, I need this. But they play music, even like very long music, it still touches you. So as a way of speaking and connecting with people, I think it, I'm not a musician, but I think there's something there that we, we need to tap into as Adventists and as Christians. And I'm thinking, recalling, is it David, King David? Mm -hmm. He had each month, he had musicians singing yeah. in the tam temple. It, it brings something that words cannot bring. Well, of course, it, it comes with words as well, but there's something there. Yeah. Of course, that. Uh, okay, you want to speak, Philip? Uh, yeah, I I also believe that music is uh, intertwined with worship, and uh, in communication uh, in a Christian context or a Seventh Adventist context, mm -hmm. when we want to communicate uh, our faith, we can also communicate the way the way we worship God, and I think that's why music also helps uh, communicating. Yeah, thank you so much. Well, <clears throat> the reason why I'm I'm touching on this subject uh, with an approach related to communication is because unfortunately in the large majority of regions music is not organized by the church what I want to say on that we have a structure an organization for education leaders trainers etc we have a structure in organization for the health system, doctors, hospitals, etc. We have a structure for the work of the pastors, for accountants, for, you know, all sorts of things. The only thing that we don't have a structure, an organization like we have in everything in the church is in the area of music. And because of that, musicians try to do something but when they do things they face with the challenge of people that like and dislike and then finally people say well music is a problem of course there's a problem if you don't lead if you don't give orientation if you don't use properly it becomes a problem and to be honest with you having an activity like music without proper structure and leadership and training and inspiration of people that deal with this, I think that we have a small quantity of problems because people understand the importance of music, but when it comes to realize and to do, then we face limitations. Uh, let me briefly share with you a little bit about my personal testimony, okay? I was born in Brazil in a home that is close to Islam. My mom was born in Islam, very, very, very poor. They struggle for living, for food, but she always was a dreamer. And one day she came from her poor home and came in front of the house of a, a family and the girl was practicing piano. And she was very little, kind of six or seven years old. And she was watching and was appreciating. And then silently, a, a lady came to her and said, well, why are you in the streets? You need to be in the school. And she said, well, I don't have money to go to the school. And this lady was a pastor's wife. And she said, well... I will take you to the a school. And she took her to a Seventh-day Adventist school, an Adventist education 
changed the life and the future of my mother. Later, she deal with coppering. She went to the board school. She met my father. But in the beginning, they were extremely poor. And I, was, I came for a very humble origin. But despite the struggles, my mother always dreamed for all the children to learn music. And she put me to learn <laughs> to take piano lessons with five years old. I hated. I, I never appreciated dealing with music. And as time was going by, I was looking to play football on the streets, to climb trees. And she said, well, before you need to practice those scales and arpeggios and all of that for one hour, then you go. So music was a pain to me. But finally, when I came to board school, she was not pressing me. Then I missed music. And I started doing music by myself, searching chords, composing, arranging. And finally, I discovered the need of music in the church. And I thought, I will study music to be a music ministry. Because since I was very young, my mother said, well, you need to learn piano to play in the church. Please note that the mind of my mother is for me to learn music, to serve the church, not to give concerts, not to be an artist, none of this, but to play the hymns for people in the church to sing. And then, and this always was in my mind, you know, to use music as a ministry. And then I came to Sao Paulo and studied music. I did, a, a, I was graduated in piano performance, composition and conducting, music education. Then I took a master's degree program in music history and composition. You're gonna say, well, wait a minute. I, I heard that you are the communication director. Why in the world do you have all of this academic foundation in music? That's, <laughs> that's the reality. Now, the one million question is, how in the world you came from music to communication? And that's, <laughs> let me tell you this, can help you to understand what is this last frontier in communication and my approach in regards to the subject. In Sao Paulo, I start doing recordings and producing music and doing all of that. But then I discovered that one big challenge is distribution. We had the CDs, we had the cassettes, we had the LPs, but it was very hard to disseminate this. And then I heard that there were plans for people to start in Brazil. It is written in Portuguese. And I said, hey, that's the window that I need to use to disseminate music. And then I came to the people and said, well, let me help with this program, this and that. Finally, they put me as a, a producer of the program. And I start working with this, it is written in Portuguese because of the music. I had no training in communication. I didn't know anything about television, about TV production, anything. But for the opportunity to disseminate music, I started using that. So the beginning was very painful. I faced lots of shames and humiliations, but I learned. I studied, I made questions, I connected with people. I learned how to produce, how to do this and lights and sets and programs and scripts and sequences. And I learned that was 30 years ago. Now, finally, uh, the program was a success. And, and people that was watching the program start sending letters and asking for prayer and asking for Bible studies and reading those letters and hearing those uh, uh, requests for prayer and decisions for baptism. Then I became converted to communication. But the point is, I started studying and developing. Later, South America Division invited 
me to be the director of what today is called Hope uh, uh, Novo Tempo. I was the director there for eight years and a half. From there, I became the South America Division Communication Director. Then I came to United States as an Associate Director in Communication. And in 2010, I became a Director in Communication. Of course, that during all of these years, not only on TV production, but radio production, and now on social media and internet and platforms and all of those things, it was necessary for me to learn all of this. But deep in my heart, I always believe the need to use music as a tool of communication. Like I said, we already write. When we communicate, we write a lot, okay? Number two, we speak, okay? That's another tool of communication. Number three, we use photography. Photography to, we disseminate photography a lot. We use illustrations. We use design, number five. We, we deal with logos, okay? When we have an event, we create logos. We deal with the branding, the visual identity of the church. Then we deal with public relations. All of this is communication, public relations. Then we, we deal with the internal relations. That's media services. That's another number nine. So the spectrum of activities related to communication is very wide and uses you know, words, images, and a number of things. And all this I thought with myself, why we are not using music? Because music is a beautiful combination of words and sounds and harmonies that creates an emotion. And the, the first answer why we don't use music is because music is divided basically in two types. Music for us to hear and appreciate and music that we use to participate, to be involved. And normally our preference is to enjoy music. We sit and we appreciate someone playing an instrument, someone singing. And, and, but but when, when people come and say, hey, we want you to participate. We want you to sing. Then mentally, we answer something like that. Well, I'm not a musician. Well, my voice is not so good. Uh, I don't have music training. And then comes a number of excuses for us not to be involved. Now, let me tell you something very important in relation of the use of music for communication. Music is the best way to unite the members. The best. Churches that have choir, moments of praise, little orchestras, they participate in projects like cantatas and Christmas presentations. Churches that have the members involved in music, they tend to have less apostasy. I know what I'm talking about. Many times we face uh, the, the situation of people saying, well, it's not, I, I don't like to be in the church anymore. It's too cold. There is no involvement. Believe me, if there is some group or choir or activity related to music, it will be a tool to integrate, to unite the members. Number two, words are powerful. But words with music are more powerful. When we use music to recognize the magnitude of God, to express our appreciation for salvation, when we use music as a tool to connect, there is power. 
there is great power. And we are missing this power because we are not using music. Number three, when we start singing together, our hearts blend together. I'm going to say, now you are talking like a Brazilian, you are Latin. In a, my culture here, it's completely different, this and that. Come on. The best lovers in music that I know are people from Europe. I know what I'm talking about. People say, well, Germans are cold, Swiss are this and that. But when I go to the, the, the theaters, it's full and they enjoy, they cry, they get involved. Don't tell me that they don't have heart. Don't tell me that, you know. Don't tell me that the culture is a block for people to enjoy music. Of course, that in some cultures, you have more expression, physical expression, and people can, you know, do it more from to the outside. But deep inside, every human being appreciates good music and likes to be involved with music. Of course, that some few people don't like it, hate it. Well, but just a few. Okay, generally in the church is meaningful that we have moments with everybody participate. Now, what are you gonna do facing this situation? My approach to you this, this evening is in regards of the use of music with people participating as a tool of communication for them to be involved. Of course, that you can make a concert in your church. You can take people to theaters to appreciate a, a beautiful symphony or a, a beautiful musical presentation. I'm not talking about presenting music. I'm talking about using music as a tool of communication between people. Uh, using music to connect people. Using music uh, for people to express their feelings to God. And I, I, I wrote some uh, uh, comments that I would like to share with you. And of course, that we will, we will share this uh, in writing for you. Okay, so those are suggestions for moments of praise. And those suggestions can be used in your homes, in your institutions, and in churches, etc. Number one, uh, objectives of moments of praise. Number one, to bring the creature to the creator. That's one main objective. Number two, to submit one's will to the Lordship of Jesus. It's amazing that when we sing, we can more easily surround ourselves into Jesus, into God. Number three, to enter in the presence of God. Number four, to enjoy the glory of his presence. Those four objectives can be fulfilled using music as a tool of communication. I know what I'm talking about. I have experienced this. And I know that God has power to use music just to blend, just to integrate. Now, let us talk about the lyrics for this kind of moments of praise, okay? Like I said, I'm trying to be very practical and to the point. Those lyrics, it needs to have beauty, content, poetry, and inspiration. I am sorry, but sometimes we choose some songs in the church that they are not necessarily beautiful or inspired. It's, it's kind of a dry group of rhymes and words. So let us not use this kind of songs. Number two, those lyrics needs to express people's feelings. <laughs> very, very empathetic. You cannot expect a response from people 
if they don't look to those lyrics and say, have nothing to do this message with myself. So as a leader, you need to try to perceive and get into their feet to understand their feelings and find songs that combine this. Number three, lyrics that is good to, for connection with God. Some, some lyrics is about a testimony. I found Jesus, then he changed my life. Other lyrics are for adoration. God, we recognize your power. We honor you, etc. But we need to find hymns and songs in your language, in your hymnal, in your culture, that could be this link of connection between people and God. There's number four. As much as possible, use lyrics like prayers. If you take, if you pay attention to those recommendations, you will discover that people will use this tool of communication with meaning. You know, the problem is that many times, okay, let's sing the first song, and then we say, blah, 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 blah. there's no meaning. There's no connection. Let's, let's comment a little bit about the use of PowerPoint. I suggest when you have the lyrics up there for people to sing, to use large, clear letters. Why? Because generally the projection is a well-illuminated place. When you have small letters, people will have difficulty to read the lyrics. Number two. The fewer illustrations, the better. Sometimes, uh, if you illust if you you must illustrate, use something neutral or discreet. Sometimes the illustrations for the lyrics of the music, it's so attractive, so colorful, so beautiful that distracts. So <laughs> many times I start singing, then I stop and say, oh man, what a beautiful sunset. Look to those moments. Oh, how beautiful clouds. No, 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 no. The background is neutral and then you have the lyrics up there. Also, sometimes photos and videos are so good and beautiful that they distract from the message of the music. That's four simple suggestions for you to to pay attention in communicating through music using PowerPoint for the lyrics. Now let's talk about music, that controversial subject. It needs to have charisma. <laughs> what does it mean? There are songs that has absolutely no charisma. They are difficult, they are complicated, we need to discover songs that it's easy to sing along. If it is too complicated, people will be disconnected. Use songs that have cut on. You know, I mentioned about that. Make sure the music key is right. Sometimes it is so high that people can't sing. Other times it's so low that it becomes ugly. I remember one time uh, I was doing a special composition using the theme of we have this hope and lift up the trumpet. It took me kind of five or six months to put together the arrangement for choir, children, orchestra, band, everything. So and at the end of the process, I was invited to play for the congregation into, into the into Brazil College Church. And I remember that my version, my composition, arrangement of, of the combination of the two songs was in a higher uh, uh, key because sopranos, you know, higher and uh, the, the, the whole effect was high. And at the day that I went to play for the congregation, I forgot the key, the original key for congregation. And I started using the key of my, my arrangement. And it was a disaster because after the introduction, the congregation starts thinking, 
we have this hope. Da -da 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 -da. When I look at that, I said, Lord, forgive me for my mistake. It... <laughs> and everybody. It was so hype. And then all the congregation. Da, 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 da. Christ is King. Of course, they couldn't go higher than that. It was such a horrible mistake. But many times, when we get one hymn or song or some something like a music, the key is too high. So pay attention if it's not too high and if it is not too low. Another thing is the tempo. Sometimes when we lead uh, music, it, it's too fast that people cannot understand or digest the words or too slow. So the tempo needs to be something that is kind of natural for people to participate. Now, regarding this sequence of songs, I have 14 items that I'll try to cover quickly with you. How can you put those songs in a sequence? My suggestion, you can change whatever you want, is for you to move for faster songs to slow songs, okay? Normally, a moment of praise is between 13 to 15 minutes. Other places is seven minutes. Other places can be 20 minutes, but average, okay? If you consider this period of time, let us talk about the sequence of those songs. Move from fast to slow. Number two, from outside the body, from the interior. There are some songs that naturally we sing and we can use our hands. Depends on the culture. And people, some people can sing like this all the time. That, that's okay. But use songs that has more motion. I'm not saying contemporary or rhythmic or I'm not, I'm not going into this field. Uh, people, uh, songs that are more alive, okay? Then, as time goes by into the sequence, use things more reflective, more soft, perhaps a little bit more slow, okay? Number three, use on the sequence songs that connect personal relationship with God. It's very, very important for communicators to use this. And they say, Williams, but you are saying all of this to me. I'm not a musician. There is a guy that do this in my church. I'm not responsible for that. Well, you don't need to use this just in the church. You can use this in your personal life, in your worship with your family. Use those concepts in singing with your wife in singing with your children, in singing your Sabbath school class. You know, so what I'm trying to stimulate is for us with understanding, use deliberately music to connect with God. Number four, use current music, but don't forget music from the hymnal and vice versa. Okay? Number five, mix up styles. People have different tastes. Sometimes we say, well, needs to be this. Well, okay, so a, a certain amount of people are going to appreciate. Others are going to, ah, it's not for me. Number six, be aware of the congregation. Be ma malleable. What does it mean? Sometimes you have a, an idea about a temp. But the congregation is more like So if the whole congregation is slowing a little bit, it's slow with them. But not at the point that the song will be kind of ah, too slow, okay? Use music that doesn't offend. I know that you, you have your personal taste. That is fine. But sometimes 
our taste offend a large majority of people. You are using music to connect people with Jesus, not for controversy, not for discussion. Number eight, he hears the songs. Many times we are leading uh, a moment of praise and we don't know the songs. How can we lead if we don't know? Number nine, he hears the sequence. Remember which comes first, second, third, and fourth. It's very, very inappropriate that we start and say, oh, let me try to remember how we, uh, uh, I, I can't remember. Uh, oh, well, now I remember. That's, that's bad, you know? Number 10, change what will be necessary beforehand. In other words, be organized, have a plan. Number 11, know what you are doing and where are you going? For example, when you make a, a group of songs about heaven, make in a sequence that creates a, an impression, a positive impression about heaven in the hearts of the people. You can create a sequence about the cross. Then in the sequence, it, it, it is creating into the minds and hearts of people a wonderful impression about the sacrifice of Christ. Make a good sequence about the second coming of Jesus and so on. You understand the concept. Number 12, the moment of praise must have a sequence. Uh, I, I, I don't recommend for you to say, okay, so let's sing together. Who has a, a choice? Oh, okay, number 34. Okay, who wants another? In the minds of people, they don't understand what they are doing this. And the messages are not connected. There's not a specific goal to be fulfilled. Group the songs by subject. That's what I mentioned. Second coming, sacrifice, the cross, you know, etc. If you have many meetings, choose one song and repeat it. For example, sometimes we have a week of prayer. Choose one song to be the main song, and then you repeat and repeat and repeat that specific song. You can use others, but that one every day. It comes into the hearts of people. Uh, sometimes I have a use that God is so good, you know. We sing and sing and sing and sing, but at the end we say, God is so good. God is so good. So it creates a good connection with people and confirms it. Now, let us talk about conducting because people say, well, I'm not a conductor. So and I don't have a training. Conducting is a very, very easy thing. Let me put a little bit farther. I'll give a little demonstration to you on this. Make the tempo clear. Normally, conducting is one, and coming inside is two, three, four. When it comes down, it's one again, two, three, four. It's not the end of the world. You don't need to be a professional musician to do this. It's, it's simple enough. Now, the music has some contrast. Sometimes it's very soft. Other times it's loud. So your body language can help to have something strong or something soft, something sweet, you know? So that's one of the things that you can, you can train in front of the mirror to, to see how, how it works, okay? Number three, be careful not to get in the way. Sometimes you're conducting, create a mess in the minds of people. They don't understand the gesture and the tempos are kind of fast and slow, so be careful. Uh, on this movement, it's like, remember, do you know a basketball? You kick, you kick, you kick. So that's the basic principle in conducting, you know? Because when you kick, you will start from here. When you come to the same point, that's one tempo. You go there, when you come to the same point, it's another tempo. Not complicated at all. Don't rule everything. What is that? Sometimes we are 
conducting here and then there's a whole note and people are there and then you are marking and doing this and exercising. No, 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 take it easy. Sometimes you relax your movement just to make it simple for people. Other thing for the person that is leading is to help with the lyrics. Many times it's good for you to remember the next phrase or some keywords for people uh, singing. Okay, now the speed of the songs. People need to breathe. Okay, remember that. People need to breathe. So don't make it too fast, but use slow music and fast music to create a contrast. Number three, when people sing along, everything slows down a bit, okay? Personally, you can come, bam, ba, da, 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 But when it comes everybody singing together, it's, ba, ba, da, 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 just for you guys to be together, okay? Number four, go along with people, but keep the tempo. Number five, don't let the congregation get dragged down. What does it mean? You will start happy and beautiful and then comes slow and slow and slower and slower. And finally, there's a tempo that's, oh, Lord, help me to get to the end of the song. Okay? Having the moment of praise, number one, preferable before the spoken message. Before the sermon. Number two, remember the moment of praise in your home, in your institution, in your department, in your church, in a hospital, whatever, is not a moment to learn music. Why? Because if you are teaching music during the moments of praise, it breaks all the spiritual power of the moment of praise. Number three, in teaching new songs, taking it, it can be before the program. So before you start the program, you can come and teach new songs. Number two, you can uh, share CDs, links, watch DVDs and, and movies with the lyrics for people to learn before. It's very important to have this preparation. And finally, let me talk about the duration of those moments of praise. Varies according to the time and circumstance. Average time between 13 to 18 minutes and teaching new songs, use as much as time as you have available for people to learn, okay? Now, of course that when I talk about this, I'm talking about a little slice of the use of music. But to me, that slice is the basis, is the foundation of the music ministry. Uh, why? Because it's the opportunity for people to connect to God. And this is a very, very serious matter. Today, we live in a world of dispersion. We have this wonderful tool here that it's very good to connect, to do everything. But uh, you agree that people are disconnected. And the whole intent of using music as a communication tool is that we can do better as a family, as a church, as a group. A final strategic consideration. If your church is active in using music, fine. You just join the club and enjoy. That's fine. But if you perceive need, uh, I challenge you to be used by God to lead people in communication through music. Why? Because music helps to, to memorize in the mind 
the blessings that comes from God. Music opened the heart for us to connect directly with God. And music is a wonderful expression of gratitude for God's blessings. It's so sad that a person go to church, they hear the Sabbath school lesson, they hear testimonies, they hear uh, requests for offering, they hear prayers, they hear sermons, they hear and they hear and they hear. They sing a little bit here, a little bit there, and then they leave. So there was no engagement. There was no participation. So I believe that as communicators, we need to try to explore this frontier. And believe me, I am saying this with the heart full of conviction because Europeans love music. Europeans appreciate music. Europeans will react when they have something well planned, well done for them to get involved, for them to participate. So I hope and pray this presentation can be a blessing for your ministry, for your church, for your life, for your family. I don't know if you have some questions. We have some minutes before the end of this presentation. I'll be, I'll be available to do my best. David, shall I go, go in or step you, in? You or? take the lead first, Paolo, yeah. and then I'll follow. Okay, okay. Thank you so much. Okay, well, okay. Let, all... let, let me connect because the battery is dying. Okay, so give okay. me just... Okay. Uh, just wait for a minute. Um, we can either write some questions um, in the chat if you want or step in the conversation. Uh, if you want to say something, please just raise your hand and we'll give you opportunity or put a question in the chat if you want. But first of all, thank you so much, uh, Pastor Williams, for, for being with us and for the enlightening uh, presentation that you have made. Mm -hmm. um, I would like to highlight that fact. We, we, from the division point of view, and also from the union's point of view, sometimes we have people that are responsible for uh, for the service uh, of music, as you know, and also from the local church. But in fact, we may uh, forget very, very often this connection of using music as a means of communication. And that is why we invited you to come. I have one question for you before mm -hmm. people start putting some questions. Um, there is a, um, you presented quite um, openly and, and very deeply uh, the connection uh, of, of music on worship and especially at the service of church. Mm -hmm. Would you like to add something about um, music as a means of mission? How do you see the, the possibilities that we can take from music uh, like we, we we know that in our church we, we also have concerts and we invite singers and uh, and groups uh, as a means of evangelism but I have to tell you that and you also know that that several um, other uh, congregations and uh, religions if you want to call it that way have uh, have a whole system of evangelism um, based on music mm -hmm. could give examples we have like the Mormon choir we have the gospel choirs uh, yeah. on evangelicals we also have but we don't do it at a local level enough don't you agree with me what do you think yes absolutely i think that you are completely right pastor paulo because uh, yeah like i said today i i touched one slice you know but music for evangelism has many many aspects number one it's wonderful to attract people Many people come to the meetings because of the music. Number two, if you start teaching people music during the evangelistic meetings, it will confirm the spiritual truth. And number three, there was a pastor that mentioned a phrase that I never forgot. He said, people that enter the church singing, they stay. It means that if people during the evangelistic meetings start singing and participating when they come to the church, 
normally they are more structured. They are more solid, more rooted in the church and in the biblical truth. So music on evangelism is not necessary. It is indispensable. Thank you so much. We have a first question from uh, Ciro Magnano from Italy. Italy. Uh, can you suggest some good books or maybe materials to read about this topic? Well, to be honest with you, on the topic of this kind of approach that I'm sharing with you on music, we don't have many things. Um, we, we have many commentaries about the importance and praise and attitude and psychological things and emotional things, but practical things on how to deal with music in a way to engage and to involve people, we don't have much. Uh, I, I have more material and whatever I have, I can share. And like you saw, it's not something too much philosophical or complicated. It's more some step one, step two, take care of this and do this and do that as suggestions. So to start uh, on the top of my head, I, I am not remembering books that are practical on how to develop uh, moments of praise and moments of singing. But um, yeah. What 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 the, the what I have is things that I put on notes. But if I discover books, I will share. Thank you so much. Uh, we had during our conversation, we had some remarks from Cart, um, and this last one is very interesting. Mm -hmm. um, when we talk about communication as a tool, can, could we specify how who is communicating what to whom? This is very interesting. When we talk about music, who is communicating what to whom? <laughs> we, we can approach that in a, in a whole different levels, right? Yes, absolutely. Uh, let me share a little testimony that probably will help, okay? My wife is a professional singer. Her name is Sonetti. During 18 years, she has been the outer call for Pastor Bouillon evangelistic meetings worldwide. And uh, she, she has an alto voice and their parents lived on the west of Brazil in a very, very humble area, far away. But many times they come through to Congress, father, mother, older sister, and my wife. She was the little one on that time, four, four in the car. My father-in-law, he, he had a beautiful voice and he decided that the family will sing in four parts. The mother was the soprano, my wife was the alto, her brother was the tenor, and the driver, my father-in-law, was the bass. And all the trips that they do by car, going to congresses and visiting parents and vacation, all the trips, they traveled singing, singing hymns. And that experience create a mark in the mind and the heart of my wife. And when we married, she started implementing these practices in my family. And I can see the results, having all the children together, participating and singing and opening the heart while we travel. And one of my daughters, Laura Morena, she's a professional singer like her mother. So what I'm saying to you is who is the audience? The audience is whoever is available to open the heart for music. Why is the main reason why we do this is connection. Music connects people and music connects people with God. So I don't know if I answered the question, but that testimony is a kind of example, a positive example of the blessing to sing together and to get involved participating. Yes, I, I think you, you answered. And uh, there is a, a promise from David and I, I think I can share with David, 
that we will make another another session regarding other arts besides music. Okay. Maybe talk about literature, to talk about uh, paint, painting uh, that relates us to, to God and to, to express our worship to God too. Let's go to Joshua. I think he has a question, right? Okay. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Yeah. Uh, I want to say it's, it's an honor to listen to you, Pastor Williams. Mm -hmm. um, as uh, I know, I was in Brazil. I was in Unaspe in Janeiro Coelho, and I was playing in orchestra also your songs for Quando Olho Pra Você and Conhecer Jesus. I love them, really, really good songs. And everything what you said right now on the list, like it's 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 really, really, I remember you had a sermon and the whole church was singing Quando Olho Pra Você in your sermon. And that, mm -hmm. that's that's where I had reminded you. And when I saw that you're having this uh, talk, I, I joined it. But what I wanted to say, it is kind of different. Um, and how you were raised and how I'm, I'm also a musician. I worked in also Hope Channel Croatia mm -hmm. and also in Nova Tempo. I, I worked in Brazil and it, it's kind of different. I remember my first school to Gisexta, that's Friday uh, in, in the college, Adventist College. It was a shock for me personally mm -hmm. because I, I, I came from the biggest church in Croatia. But mm -hmm. for me personally, that was a big, big shock. And... Uh, what what I saw, what is in my heart all the time, I, I sadly left Unaspi in December, but it's in my heart all the time. Mm -hmm. And sadly, I don't see that here. And I'm trying to put it also, I'm, I don't live in Croatia anymore. I'm in Germany right now. Mm -hmm. And I go here in Germany in church. And I, I tried it, but people are sadly not, they don't want to sing with heart. That's the thing. And that's the difference, what I, what I saw in Brazil and what I see here. And for me personally, I'm trying my best, but I wanted to ask you if you have some, probably like, I don't know how to say it, but if you have some things that like can help me maybe talk with my church or to do something because people are not ready to do it. And mm -hmm. for me personally, I, I said it, it was a shock for me when I saw it first time. I, I, I adapted really, really fast because I, I also really love music. And I also went to professional music, professional violinist. But yeah, I have a question. That's my question. Yeah. Okay, Joshua. I think that those, some of the suggestions that I gave can be helpful. So if you take care in selecting the lyrics and have the right sequence and put the music together with intentionality and doing something that it's planned, organized, focus in certain subjects, perhaps having this kind of approach can be more attractive. It's very used to, very easy to say, well, we have a problem. Okay, we have problems in all the world, but what I'm trying to say to all of you, yes, yes, there is possibility of solution. There is possibility of development, of expansion, and that's the intent of trying to use music as the last frontier in communication. Thank you so much, Pastor Williams. Uh, we are not going to continue for long because uh, it's just for, for one hour, these webinars have been made like this to be short and to be effective for people. But I would like to personally uh, appreciate your presence uh, in our midst and to appreciate uh, how well you prepared this presentation to be with us in a very clear and a very practical way. And I will give the last word to David, if you don't mind. So Williams, again, with Paolo, we want to thank you. Thank you for sharing what's on your heart and trying to embrace diversity in our churches. And we live in diverse churches. Mm -hmm. and recognizing that some music some genres of music speaks to some people mm -hmm. and doesn't speak to others absolutely but when it's but we trust that when it's given with um good intent in the power of the spirit that the holy spirit there is a supernatural element that takes place mm -hmm. sure there's a psychological and i get that there's also supernatural um activity taking place too which can speak uh, to both the heart and the mind we did not answer every question tonight and both Paolo and I see every question and this is being recorded. 
Um, I'm not sure we can give you a response, but I think, Paolo, as you've said, this gives us a springboard to continue the conversation, not just about music, how we can communicate, communicate through music, but how we can use what we'll call the arts mm -hmm. to be used by the Lord and the Spirit for good purpose. Amen. To use the arts around us. So, uh, Williams, we are very, very um, blessed by what you've shared. The recording will be edited and uploaded to the TD channel in the near future. Mm -hmm. And uh, thank you for participating this evening. Yeah. Again, we recognize that not all your questions were answered. This is, a bit, this is the beginning of a conversation. Mm -hmm. And um, as, as you will recognize, Costa, in our church, we've given tremendous emphasis on articulating the gospel through speech, yeah. through rhetoric. <laughs> And you have ex you have shown uh, in your life that rhetoric without music doesn't always have the effect it should have. Yes. And thank you for your ministry over the over the many many years, I dare say decades, and that your wife has given too, and your family. Um, I, I have to say that I don't often get to see your music except to the general conference session, where you conduct the orchestra. I, okay. Are you planning on developing an orchestra next year? Oh, next year will be a symphonic orchestra during all the sessions. Is that right? Yeah. Not just on Sabbath, but in all no, the sessions. No, no. And, oh, in the last, and in the last Sabbath, we will plan to have the Hallelujah Chorus with the, all the congregation. There will be a 60,000 choir singing Hallelujah, really? Jesus is coming. Come out of this. Well, well, I had no idea that that would be the answer to that question. But you've got a plan. You've got a plan, and I know you'll Absolutely. make it happen. And yeah, that what is I'm something... Trying yeah, that ahead. is something to look forward to very, very much. Yes. And, and so I've, I've got to ask another question. Sure. Is it symphonic orchestra? Is it made up of amateurs like community choirs or, or orchestras, or is it professionals only? No, no, amateurs. It's a combination. Right. There is one orchestra from Montemorelos that comes. Yes. There's another one that comes from Virginia here. That's another that comes from Florida. And they can't stay all 10 days. So we are mixing in order to have the balance of musicians for an orchestra all the time to increase the moments of praise, to create a better understanding, to make it beautiful for the glory of God. That is something to look forward to. <laughs> and I pray that it'll be a very, very special occasion. Meanwhile, yeah. back to our local churches. And we're going to say goodnight to you. When you go to your local church this week, it will be maybe some 10 people. Whatever you can do, just take a good song that is well known, perhaps. It yes. can be a gospel song or a modern song or a traditional song, but just use it to allow God to speak to the glory of God. And of course, being sensitive to those who, who are worshiping with you. And, mm -hmm. and, I, and I really, really appreciate the fact that music through the Spirit can bring people together yeah. rather than pull us apart. Yeah. Let's pray together, shall we? Father in heaven, you are the chief musician. It is you who speaks through us. Thank you for using our gifts and talents. Thank you for allowing the spirit to move and stir us. Thank you for all the visual arts and the mm. audible arts that we, we encounter. Mm. And I simply pray that for everyone in this room right now, we'll be ins inspired, moved and stirred through something good for you. Amen. Through the music that we can hear, play or share. In Jesus' name, amen. It has been a real pleasure to be with all of you in Europe. My music foundation is European. So in talking to you is an honor, and I hope and pray that you'll be blessed in using music for the glory of God. Amen. We must not leave without uh, pa pa noting Paolo's message. Next month, we meet again Tuesday the 18th. 6 p.m. London, 7 p.m. Central European time. Look forward to seeing you.